Renee. So uh, good for you, Renee. <laughs> I don't know what she's got in plan for her husband, but I must say it might be good. <laughs> Well, last week I was talked about authority, I mean, about uh, how that we don't judge our, our spiritual life according to our feelings. Because if you did, if you, if you don't feel good one day, and, 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 and that often happens, the older you get, you might not feel too many good days. If you went by your feelings, then you wouldn't be saved. It's a faith thing. It's a faith walk. And so having said all of that about not walking according to your feelings and judging your spiritual life according to that, in fact, I heard Billy Graham say this past week, the time when you feel like God is the furthest from you is most likely the time when he is the nearest to you. You can't go by your feelings. They'll be, they're just as deceiving as, as the enemy is. Your flesh will tell you all kinds of tales and stories. And your mind will latch on them and believe them. And thus, you've got a whole world of trouble because of it. So if that is true, then think about your authority. We oftentimes want to feel authority, just like we want to feel the power of God. Authority is not something you feel either. You, you, just, you just have it. That's all there is. As a child of God, you have got authority. <clears throat> when, I was, when I was 14, I kind of felt like I could take on the whole world. I, ah, mean and lean and uh, argumentative and pick a fight when there wasn't even a fight to pick. And uh, I, I was out swimming one day. Uh, we had a couple of guys and, and I were out we were swimming in a lake, and there was a lot of people in the lake. It was sliding boards and diving boards. We had a good time. And, uh, but we were off into another area where there was nobody hardly there. So we could just kind of beat ourselves and throw a ball or whatever. And, and, and because the water wasn't very deep, you had to get on your knees so that the water would at least be up to here. So here comes this guy. I, 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 he, he, comes, he comes over to where we are, and he's saying, I want to play here. Y'all go somewhere else. Well, I thought, who do you think you are? So to let him know how big I am, I stood up. I said, go where? Then he stood up, and I looked up, and I said, oh, over there. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's always a giant bigger than you as far as the flesh goes. But I promise you, by the authority of the Word of God, there is no demon bigger than you in authority. There, there's going to be giants. So there's going to be big giants. I wanted to, <clears throat> because sometimes the, the light won't lend itself to show you a video, there was a video that I had of a, of a, a little old cub. Uh, cub bear, you know, he's out there playing in the waters and stuff like this. And, and he saw these, these hunters. Uh, 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 no, it wasn't a hunter. It was a, I think it was a lion. A lion came up to him, and, and he was going to pounce on him. And the old cub went, rawr, rawr. It wasn't nothing. It wasn't nothing at all. You know, but that, that lion, the king of the beast, took off through the, the fields, you know, and the woods and and, and and so the, the bear, the little old cub, went back to his own business, thinking, I'm Mr. Big Stuff. But then the camera goes to the rock behind the cub, and there was the big mama bear. So the lion knew I ain't got a chance with that kind of backing. The devil knows he has not got a chance with the kind of backing that you got. I was four years old walking down the streets of Ohio going to the store. That was the day in which, you know, you could walk as a child anywhere just about and go play. So I was going down to my friend's house, and my sister's always, she's seven years older than I am. She's always going to be seven years older than I am. I can't catch up with her to save my life. But she's seven years older than I am, so consequently she had other friends and a, 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 a class of, 
uh, of big guys who I don't know whether they had a little bout to her at school or not, but they were going to take it out on me, and I didn't know it because I was innocently walking down the street, and I was walking down the sidewalk, of course. Uh, here, here's these three guys, and they come up to me as if we're going to do some damage to you, you little four-year squirt. And so here I am, you know, I'm looking at them, and, 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 and all of a sudden something came up inside of me, and I said, get out of here. And they took off. I thought, whoa, I'm pretty good. Uh, so I turned around. I was, for some reason, and there was my sister. <laughs> like the mama bear, you might say. So, you know, we, we got a backing that just, you, you've got an authority that you don't realize what you've got. You really don't realize it. But <clears throat> that's the problem. Because we don't realize the authority we've got, we don't exercise it. We fall prey to everything that the devil throws at us, not realizing we can stand up to him. You know, when a policeman puts on his, off, his, his uh, uniform and he's got that badge on, do you know he's more powerful than the gun and the billy stick and all the other stuff he's got? That badge right there is his authority. Now, he might not feel any different. He might feel just like you and me when we sometimes get up in the morning and just rather, you know, I don't feel like doing anything. But despite how he feels, he's got authority. There's no way in the world he can stop a car in his own strength. But because that badge is there, he holds up his hands, and you better stop. Because he's got the backing of the entire United States, the law. He's got that kind of backing because of that. We've got that kind of backing too, and it's called the Word of God. <clears throat> Look here in Hebrews 4. <clears throat> For the Word of God is quick, it is powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged sword, pierces even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit, you can't even see the spirit. You can't even see the soul, and yet the Word of God knows exactly where it is and is able to divide that very thing. It's also the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and the joint and the marrow and the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. That's the Word of God, Hebrews 4, verse 12. And Isaiah 55, 11. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the things that I send it to, or I send it to do. We've got authority to send the word of God to situations that we only hear about, such as in talking with Ronnie this morning, sent the word of God by way of authority that God gave me to minister to his body. Calling Brenda Allman, who had a sleepless night last night because of worrying concerning her son, and be able with authority to speak peace to that mind and rest and strength to that body. That's the authority God's given us. It's his will, it's his word, and because it's his word, we can exercise what he says. Now, who are we? Who are we? According to 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21, he has made Jesus to be sin for us. He knew no sin. Why did he do that? That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. I am not righteous in myself. I continually would pray the prayer of David on a daily basis, on an hourly basis, a constant basis. Oh, Lord, forgive me of my thoughts. Forgive me of my words. Forgive me of my actions. Oh, Lord Jesus, I'm a, I, this flesh seems to make me want to do certain things I don't want to do. The Lord is a constant battle. So, therefore, in that battle, I don't feel worthy to to really do anything for your glory. 
And yet the Lord says, I don't see you. I see my son. I see the righteousness of my son. Therefore, because of that, when you speak the word, it's just as powerful as if Jesus were speaking it. When he says, rise up and be healed. Get up and walk. Body, be cleansed of leprosy. Dead, be raised. It's just that powerful in your mouth. The only reason we don't do it is because we don't feel worthy. And you've got to stop feeling that way. You've got to start feeling as a policeman does when he puts his uniform on. I have authority because it's been given to me. And God has given us authority. He said, but I'm not worthy to receive it. I'm not worthy to receive it. I know me. I know where I've come from. I know my past. I know what goes through my mind. I know the motives and the intents of my heart. And they're not pure. I have some trouble sometimes. God, I'm not worthy. That's what we all have to deal with sometimes. So it, it kind of goes back to a, a, a guy in seminar. He had to do an exegesis on the Sermon of the Mount. And he was failing the class. I mean, he, he didn't even, he never even showed up to see, the, see the, the professor. And yet, you know, he was auditing the class. And as a result, you know, he was going to hopefully make it. But he knew that, man, he, he was done for unless he did this, and he had five days to do it. He grabbed every book he possibly could, laid it on the, on the table, and began to write, 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 write. He wrote 80 pages of exegesis on Sermon on the Mount, and he handed it in. He said, I know it wasn't good. I know it was not good. But the professor gave me an A found out the professor didn't have time to read such 80 pages, and he said, A. And a friend said, well, didn't you go and tell him you don't, you're not worthy to, to, to get that A, that it was not that good? He said, he is authority. He's the one that gave me the A, and I'm going to take it. <laughs> Which is to say, we know that what we've got to offer is not all that good. It's not A quality. I mean, it's C at best. But he doesn't see you. He doesn't see your work. He sees the pages, which is Jesus. And he says, A. You didn't get your righteousness because you deserved it. You didn't get your righteousness because of your good works. You got it because the Lord Jesus Christ gave it to you, and as a result of him giving you that, you got it. You got a authority, authority in him. James 4, verse 7. While you're turning that, hey, James 4, verse 7, and you know it pretty well, we don't have to put up with the devil. We don't have to put up with him. Because we have got the highest authority. Now, he's got authority because it's been given to him because he, he messed with Adam and Eve. And as a result of that, he won and thus became the God of this whole world. But the good news is we are not of this world. We're of an, another source because of the one that's living in us. So we don't have to put up with him. He says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Submit yourself to God because I'm submitted to God. I can resist the devil and he's got to flee from me because I submit myself to putting on this, this officer's uniform and I got this badge. Because of that, I've got, I've got authority and I can move on into doing what I need to be, needs to be done. I am submitted to this badge. I am submitted to this word. As a result of that, I can resist the devil. He's got to go. Uh, my daughter has got three dogs, and they're in the house. And one of the dogs is, if, if, if stood on his hind legs, would be as tall as, as I am. Big thing. I, I think about, I, I, I'm not for sure how many pounds it is, but it's, it's like another person. And, um, and the dogs are just getting rowdy. I mean, she said, I'm going to have them in a training school. And she tried that, you know, and, well, 
The dogs didn't need, did not need to be trained. She needed to be trained. So the trainer said, look, dogs don't respond too much to your words. You got to growl at them. Let me hear you growl. And she went, rawr. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let me hear you growl. Rawr. That's right. So now next time you want your dogs to do something, you growl at them. So she got home. Big old dog just started kind of, yeah, what, I'm, 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 the, I'm the ruler of this house. She said, Zena, go into that living room. No response. I said, Rawr, go. And that dog went. And to this day, that dog will do exactly what she says do because she does not want to hear that growl. And all of them do that. Oh, I, I was over there one day, and they were hopping and jumping, you know, trying to greet me and all that kind of stuff. And she said, Rawr! and they bowed down. That's exactly what the devil has to do. He has to bow down when you speak the word of God and speak it with authority like you know. Don't, don't come up and say, well, the word says uh, uh, in, in his name and by his stripes, you're healed. I, I sure hope that's up for us today. Well, John's not going to receive anything out of that. But say, the word of God says and didn't change, didn't say it was just for that day only. He said, and greater works that I, I can do because he's gone unto the Father. Therefore, in the name of Jesus and by his stripe, be healed. Sickness respond to what I'm telling you. Take authority. Take authority. You got nothing to lose and everything to gain. Exercise what God has given you. I, I like to, to sing the songs like uh, uh, that came out of the scripture. Uh, uh, songs like um, uh, I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Old things are passed away. I've been born again. More than a conqueror, that's who I am. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. You know what a more than a conqueror is? More, now think, more than a conqueror. Now you take two, two men fighting in a, in a ring, and after about 15 rounds, this one, he got his hand up. Hey, I'm the winner. Black eyes and cut, cut, cut cheek and, and a fat lip, and huh, I'm the winner. Well, you are the conqueror, but a more than a conqueror is one who goes into battle and comes out better than they went in. When you exercise authority in the word of God and you go into a battle and you, you will come out feeling stronger and better because you've exercised the word. You know it works and will work. Always, never failing. The thing that prevents us, though, from exercising God's principles is that we continually deal with the I don't feel worthy. Sometimes we feel like the prodigal son. You know how that when he, he said, Father, give me the goods that come to me from the inheritance, and your father did give it, and probably gave him some little advice too. Say, son, I don't, don't spend this all in one place. <laughs> yeah, better hang on to it. You better, you, the times are going to come. It's going to be rough. Ah, oh, everything's going to be just like it always was. The father had insights living long enough that you can't depend upon the, the way the weather is that there could become a drought. And sure enough, they did, and there was a famine, and the son had spent everything he had. He was, he was friendless, he was homeless, and he was hungry so much so that he ate the slop that the pigs were given. And he thought, boy, you know, the servants live better than this that are back in my own home, and I, I, I'd be willing to be a servant. I'd, and so he comes on back home, and, and you know he feels unworthy. And the father kisses him and gives him a robe and a ring and shoes upon his feet and then reinstates him back into the family and has a party and all these kind of things that would hopefully make him feel uh, apart once again. 
And, and yet, I can imagine a servant coming up to him and saying, what is your, what, what's, what's your wish for me today? And, and, all, and he, think, he thinks, man, I was worse than you. I was way under you. And now you're asking me for permission to do something or you're asking me of what I desire and, and, and a command. And I, I, I just don't, I don't feel worthy. I, I just don't. Go ask my older brother. I mean, he's been here all the time. He's never messed up. Go, go get him. You know, that's what we do a lot of times when uh, people are wanting to be ministered to. You, you don't feel worthy to be minister. To minister. I, I used to have some people in Salisbury that, that they were truly, they, were, they, had been, they had been programmed from a long time ago to be pastor conscious. Pastor had to do everything. A pa pastor was the ultimate authority. If anything was ever going to get done, it had to be the pastor that did it and all that kind of stuff. And, and they would call me, and uh, they would say, uh, I, I'm, I'm talking to a lady right now, and, and, and she wants prayer for healing. And because I was 23 years old, I'd say, okay, I'll be right there. Brrr. Go in there and anoint with oil and pray for healing and back out to the car and back home again. And, and it, I, this went on for a little bit, and, and, and God began to check me. He said, do you think you're the great white hope here? Do, do, you, do, do you think you're the man of the hour? Uh, what, what's, you're not training your people to be who I want them to be. I understood. And God... I, I, it, put it in me to, to stand strong in that because I got another call. And they said, uh, I'm with, uh, and they called by name, and, and they need prayer. Would you pray for them? I said, uh, I'll pray here, but I want you right now to go over and lay hands upon them, and you pray this prayer. I, and I, at, at first it was like appalling. Oh, I can't do that. No, not me. I'm not worthy. I'm not the pastor. I'm not licensed. <laughs> I've not been ordained. And, and they would go and do it. Now, not, not everybody in Salisbury was that way, but, but, but a, lot of the, a lot of the new ones are a lot that were, they just didn't feel like they could do it. And then one called me and said, uh, I've just witnessed to somebody, and I'm in their home, and they're ready to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you come over and lead them to the Lord? I said, nope. What? I said, no. Why do you want to give me your blessing? I didn't have to even say anything else. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Uh, what do I do? I said, just ask them if they want to receive Jesus, yes or no. If they say yes, pray for them. If they say no, yeah, I'll pray for them for sure, but... And they come back to church and say, or actually they call me up and said, they gave their heart to Jesus. Wow. I said, see what a blessing you got and you wanted to give it away. And I'm telling you that in third person. <laughs> you have got to realize you've got blessings that God has got for you. They're there. Take them. Don't give them to somebody else. Don't give them to, to Chris because he's a Sunday school teacher. Don't give them to Scott because he assists me. Don't do that. Don't give them to me. Thank you for them. Thank you for your consideration. But I want you to be blessed. And God wants you to be blessed. And he wants you to walk in that authority. Folks, I'm going to tell you what. I could have all the degrees and doctorates and all there is and then the whole wide world. But in the eyes of God, those things don't count. It's do I believe in him? That's it. That's all the authority you need. That's all you've got to have. And every single one of us are capable of that. I'll tell you what, too. I believe more people are healed and more people are saved because of you than they are of me any day. Because people find out you're, you're a pastor. and uh, I, I, That's why I don't dress like a, what, what is, is that a pastor supposed to dress like this all the time? Because I remember one time I was coming home from, from a funeral and I was dressed up and people said, 
yeah, that's a pastor, that's a preacher. I know that preacher. And, 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 and they, would, they would even tell my wife, said, I, I, saw, your, I saw your husband. Uh, he, you know, he's a preacher. You know, she didn't have to tell him anything because I was dressed like it. Do you think anybody's going to come up to me and say, you know something I'd like to ask you about the Lord? They don't. They don't do it. Because, you see, I'm supposed to have the pat answers, uh, uh, unfeeling. Uh, it's like you're going to a rich person who was born with a silver spoon in their mouth and telling them how hard it is to live out on the streets. They have no concept whatsoever about you. They just, they can't, they can't come down to your level. And that's the way they feel about pastors sometimes. That pastor's so lofty and been up there so long, he didn't know how it feels to be down here where I live. <laughs> he never has to deal with sin. <laughs> Tell Paul that. Paul, Paul misquoted, I guess, himself in the Scripture because he, he said he had a problem. But when, you, when, when it's every day, Everyday clothes and going out, uh, uh, then they they recognize you know you you are somebody. But I got to tell you this on me, uh, I uh, I'll mess with a lawnmower every once in a while, and of course I got lawnmower all over me, and I've got special clothes that I wear that are absolutely no good. If they're ever washed, they're washed by themselves, uh, and uh, they're tore up. They, they just, they're just a mess. And my son said, Dad, I'm so aggravated I got to get this title changed, and, and I, would you come with me? I said, yeah, uh, you want me to go change clothes? I'm thinking, I better not even go change clothes. He's so aggravated I got to get in the car with him right now. And I went looking like bad. I had an old torn-up farmer's hat on and everything, unshaven and had a little bit of grease, I guess, here and there. And I went up to the car lot, and, and while they were doing the business, I was talking to this one guy, but when I turned my back, he, my son said, boy, he was eyeballing you. <laughs> Who in the world is this? I don't think I'd have been able to witness too well with him, you know? I don't think it might have gone over too well at all. But, but what I'm saying is God ministers to everyday people. He does. He ministers to us. You are the most effective person for the glory of God than there is. There can't be anybody else. You can't be trained better. You, you, you just are you. People don't want to hear the lofty. They, they want to hear what has God done for you. And they can't nobody be a better authority on you than you. And you just tell them, this is what God did for me. You're a new creation. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and 18 says, And behold, after they've been passed away, all things become new. And it's a becoming new. Look at the word become. Become. You need to underline that because that's what you are. You become new. It's not new all of a sudden. You don't come to the altar and give your heart to the Lord and rise up and say, I'm a giant of a man now. I'm, I'm, I'm free and, and I'm, I'm totally mature in the Lord. No, you're a baby. And you will grow. But you don't have to wait till you're full grown in the Lord to be used. Some of the greatest evangelists and souls being saved come from somebody that's only maybe awake a week or two old in the Lord because they go back to their friends and they're so excited about what God's done for them they tell them that is what God does in us and all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of soul winning that's what the word reconciliation means Romans 8 verse 17 Galatians 2 verse 20 2 Peter 2, 9 and 10. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. If so, be that we suffer with him, hallelujah, we're all going to be glorified together with him. 
I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, but not I, but Christ now lives in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith that I have in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people who shall show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his wonderful and marvelous light. And there's another great song. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that shall show forth the praises of God. 1 John 4, verse 4. Philippians 3, verse 9. Colossians 2, verse 10. Philippians 4, 13. Because greater is he that's within you than he that's within the world. And if you be found in him not having my own righteousness, I am found in him having his righteousness, and that not of the law, but that which is through Jesus Christ and faith in him, the righteousness which is by God, by faith. You are complete in him which is the head of all principalities and powers. I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me. Lay hands upon the sick and raise the dead. I can do everything he said, the song says. In 2 Corinthians 3, verse 5 and 6, we dare to say these good things about ourselves only because of our great trust in God through Christ that he will help us to be true in what we say. He will help us to be true in what we say. Oh, that sprang out to me when I was looking over that scripture this morning. He will be true to us. He will help us to be true to what we say. What do you say about yourself? What do you say about yourself? Folks, you know, the reason why we feel the way we feel sometimes about ourselves and what we say about ourselves is because we've got a truckload of preachers that are constantly putting their thumbs on people, telling them what they're not and what they ought to be. Constantly, constantly bringing a load of condemnation upon them. Listen, preachers don't have to do that. If you just preach the Word, the Holy Spirit's going to bring all that stuff on them and make them right, and they won't be offended. They'll be drawn to God. But we constantly, I, I was raised, <clears throat> I was raised in a time when, uh, yeah, we, we saw the power of God, experienced the power of God, but I also heard people who were preachers making this kind of prayer. Oh, Lord, we are an unworthy people. We are weak, and we are in great need. Oh, Lord. And then begin their prayer and end it in the same manner. And it gave young people the impression of, I am weak. I am. It took me a long time to overcome that kind of phrasing. It took me a long time to come to the realizing that of who I am in Christ. And I still deal with that every single time I go and minister any place at any time to anyone. I still deal with that very, who am I? Because you've got an enemy that's always going to come against you that says, who do you think you are to go and minister? Because you've got the same problem, if not worse, than they do. And you say, well, well, maybe, maybe I ought not to go do this. Huh? You know, and, and so, with that in mind, it falls right back on the stuff that we've been, it's been inbred in us. I don't know about some of those messages being of the Lord or not. But I do say this, this is the word of God, and that is a fact. When he says, I will help you be what you say, what do you say about yourself? Do you say, I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. I'm a new creation, a royal priesthood. I am of a holy nation. I shall declare the praises of the Lord. Or is it? Unworthy am I that a king he would die. That's a song. Well, I don't want to talk like that. I want, I, I want to talk the way God wants. Why would he give us so many scriptures and I could give you a whole lot more? Why would he give us so many scriptures that say the contrary to what the flesh keeps pounding into our thinking all the time? Our problem is we, we don't feel like we got the right 
What gives us the right? Am I really a new creation? Am I really even saved? Why would I have, why would I even act like I am? Or why would I have thoughts like I got if I'm really saved? And so constant, we, we're, we, we keep covered our, covering ourselves up and saying, somebody else can minister better than I. No, they can't nobody minister better than you. You are the best minister God made. You are. You are the best. They can't, nobody be a better you than you. Nobody can minister like you can minister. In Ephesians 1 verse 7, in Christ we have redemption through the blood, the forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace. My father's description, one word description of you is this, redeemed. Aha, redeemed. Ha, let's, let's, let's sing that. Uh, I think we, we can do that. Uh.